You know, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. How are you dealing with everything that's been going on? Don't you think that kind of job is best left to the police? Uh-huh. And I suppose you have a plan to get to the bottom of things. Mike, you don't really think they believe Mike did it, do you? Right. Actually, there were three of us here. Me, Mike, and Julie. Hey, what's going on, Mom? We were just talking about Daniel Fox. Oh, man. I still can't believe that happened right down the street. How's Mr. Fox holding up? Edie mentioned that the police took him in. Not as a suspect, but to protect him. But that's not the weird part, Julie. Mike is... Mike, Mike? But he was here that night. I remember because you did everything in your power to stop the poor guy from going home. Julie, you're being silly. It's just that it was late, and I was worried about him walking home alone at that hour. Mom, he lives across the street. The poor man drank four nightcaps trying to be polite. Then as soon as you saw him walk into his house, you called him on the phone. As it turns out, this is a dangerous neighborhood. I wanted to make sure that he got home safely. Is that why you talked to him for almost an hour on the phone? Oh, give me a break, Julie. Who's been on the phone every night this week gossiping about people at school? Is it my fault that Danielle Vandekamp gives it up to any boy who asks? I'm just doing the right thing and spreading the word. By now, I'm sure you're not the only one that knows that. I'm sure lots of people know by now. Well, let's move on now. We're getting a bit off the topic at hand. <laughs> What else is new? Look, we can't let the police think he had anything to do with Daniel's death. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, problem solved then. All right, see you around. Hey. You came by to talk to me? Carlos, who is it? Why don't you come out here and find out for yourself? Why do you always have to have something smart to... Oh, hi. No, no. We're fine. Why did you come inside for a minute? Daniel's murder did have... Daniel's murder did have us all a bit shaken up. It's still hard to believe. It's unfortunate that something like that had to happen to Daniel. He had his whole life ahead of him. Wait a second. What does Daniel's death have to do with us? Yeah. What can we tell you that we didn't tell the police? We didn't see anything. They suspect me. I went to jail for embezzlement, for Christ's sakes. I'm not a violent man. Yeah? Well, they're wrong. Carlos would never do anything to hurt Daniel. I know for a fact that he couldn't have that night. We were both home and in bed by 11. Actually, I wasn't exactly following my normal routine that night. See, earlier in the day, Carlos tried to drag me into another one of his charity benefits. Oh, here we go. I'm not talking to you, sweetie. Stay out of it. Listen, honey, she came over here to talk to me. Carlos doesn't want you to know that he threw a fit, because I didn't want to go to his little party. We fought about it for hours. Then we had the makeup sex, then we fought again, then more makeup sex. Yeah, we didn't make the charity event, but I definitely gave it my all. As to Gabby. For your information, I had a number of appointments scheduled that day with a number of business professionals. Uh-huh, and which professional was it this time? Henri? Pierre? That guy with the mole? It's called a beauty mark. 
and that doesn't make him any less of a professional. Anyway, I had to keep my appointments and wound up pushing my workout back to the end of the day. So, I didn't go for my run until much later that night. And Carlos came home right after I did. We were together for the rest of the night. Yeah, we still had some issues to resolve. Upstairs, if you know what I mean. Carlos, have you ever heard of such a thing as too much information? I just remembered something else from that night. It involved whipped cream, strawberries... Actually, when I was running back home, I thought I saw two people milling around your house. It was pretty dark. I guess my eyes could have just as well been playing tricks on me. Did you tell the police what you saw? No. Why would I tell them that? I could have been seeing trees blowing in the wind or something. That's the kind of thing you tell them, even if you're not sure. This way they can investigate. That's what they do, Gab. Well, I definitely didn't see anything out of the ordinary. I'm sorry, I can't help you out any- Why are you apologizing to her for not seeing anything? God, Carlos, you can be such a wimp sometimes. And another thing, Carlos. Hey, Mom. What's up? That's a really strange question. Don't you remember? I was grounded. I didn't go anywhere that night. You know what's funny? If you and Dad would just let me stay out later, I'd probably be able to help you out right now. I told you I was in all night. I was playing Utter Warfare online with this guy I know from the web forums. Double trouble. I figured since nobody was home, I'd crank the volume up pretty loud. So there's no way I would have heard anything. Are you done with the interrogation now, Mom? Why would I lie to you? Jeez, you know what? You're worse than Danielle's mom. The both of you make a habit of nagging and bugging people. Why can't you just leave? Why are you so hung up on this? I mean, I know he wasn't your boyfriend or anything. He didn't even play for that team, did he? Other than you and his brother. Who's really gonna miss him, anyway? Look, Mom, I'm sorry your friend is dead, but I don't know anything. I promise. So drop it already. Hello. What a pleasant surprise. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm afraid you're wasting your time. I don't know anything about... There's only one thing that comes to mind when I think of that night, but it certainly isn't going to bring Daniel's killers to justice, so it's probably better not to... And you know exactly what I'm talking about. That was the night your son attempted to court my daughter. That night, he and Danielle were coming back from their date. I caught Danielle trying to sneak back into the house. She knew better than to stay out that late. I assume your son was the bad influence. I saw them coming out of your house looking guilty as sin. And then your son had the nerve to try to sneak in with Danielle. Mom, haven't you done enough? 
Now you're talking to the neighbors about this? Haven't you embarrassed me enough? I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, dear. You do more than enough of that for the both of them. Needless to say, they were surprised when I greeted them on the porch. I sent your son home immediately. Then Danielle and I had an interesting talk that evening. Do you know what this means? Yeah, it means we were out that night. I used to think my Danielle was incapable of hurting a fly, but she is susceptible. Do you seriously think I'm capable of that? The police said Mr. Fox was killed at 11, and if you remember, you sent him home way before that. You went off on your whole high and mighty, and of all things, on a school night tirade and sent me to bed. Besides, I refuse to defend myself. You're insane for even thinking this. If only da Danielle, you will always be my daughter. But after what this family has been through, and especially after what you've put me through, it will take more than a few words for me to trust you, considering you never even told me what you two were up to. Well, if Danielle doesn't have anything to tell us, your son. Hey, Mom. What's up? About what? What? Why don't you ever trust me? You're just coming from out of nowhere with all this. And I know you're making this up. You can't... Pr uh, that girl just can't keep her mouth shut. Okay, okay. Danielle and I went out that night. But nothing really... So, I didn't feel the need to bring it up. Um, after Mrs. Vandekamp finished her angry diatribe, I left and, and that's the truth. That's one way of looking at it. Nope. I did see someone standing outside the Scavo house talking to some car. I don't know. I guess it could have been Mrs. Scavo. Thank you. 